Implementing Microsoft Dynamics 365 can be a game changer for many organizations. There's a lot of business value and ROI that organizations can get out of that technology, but there's also a number of risks that organizations commonly face when trying to deploy D365. But what exactly are those risks? That's what I want to talk about here today. My name is Eric Kimberling. I'm the CEO of Third Stage Consulting. We're an independent consulting firm that helps clients throughout the world with their digital transformation journeys. And many of our clients are implementing or have implemented Microsoft D365. And while there's a lot of merits to the software that I actually talk about in other videos on my YouTube channel, there's also a number of risks that you have to be aware of. Some that are common to digital transformations in general, but most of which are unique to Microsoft Dynamics 365 in particular. So what I want to do today is talk about the 10 biggest risks that you should be aware of, as well as the things you could do to mitigate those risks. And by the way, before I get to this top 10 list, I also encourage you to download our guide to a successful Microsoft Dynamics 365 implementation. This guide is packed full of best practices and lessons from all of our clients that have implemented D365 over the years. And it's really our team's attempt to provide a guide and an overview of how to make your D365 project successful. So be sure to check that out in the links below. One of the advantages that Microsoft has as an ERP vendor is that they've acquired and developed a number of different ERP systems over the years. They've acquired Great Plains and Exapta, Navision, Solomon, just as a few examples. Those are different technologies that Microsoft has either acquired and or invested a ton of R&D in over the last couple of decades. But what they're doing now with D365 is they're migrating those legacy capabilities into the cloud offering of D365. And to be clear, there's two different versions of D365. You have finance and operations, which is built for midsize and larger organizations. And you also have business central, which is built for smaller organizations, more of a cloud offering for smaller to some midsize organizations. But in either case, what we're finding is that those capabilities from the legacy technologies have not yet completely finished migrating to D365. So you end up with a lot of gaps and misalignment between what you might have seen with their legacy products if you're a legacy Microsoft ERP user versus what D365 offers today. And even if you're not a legacy Microsoft ERP user from the past, you'll still find that there's certain capabilities and workflows and functions within D365 that haven't been fully developed because those on-premise systems take so long to move to the cloud. Now, having said that, and to be fair, Microsoft is probably further along with a lot of ERP vendors in the marketplace. They've actually matured their cloud offering faster than a lot of vendors, but there's still work to be done and they're not quite there yet. So just be aware that there's gaps in the functionality and the capabilities of D365. And even if that doesn't change your mind about whether or not D365 is the best fit for you, you just need to know what those gaps are so that you know how to mitigate them and where you might need to plug those gaps. Now, the next risk of D365 implementations is actually related to a strength of the product. And the product itself is a lot more flexible than a lot of systems in the marketplace. You can configure it easier. You can develop it and customize it easier. You can integrate it to third-party systems. You can add third-party apps a lot easier. And while this is a strength of the solution, it also creates a lot of confusion and turmoil and problems during implementation if you don't have the right project governance in place. So one way I like to frame it with clients and potential clients is to say that just because you can change D365 to have it do whatever it is you want it to do, doesn't mean that you should. There's a lot of risk associated with that. So you wanna be real deliberate about what you do and don't change with D365. And even more so for D365 implementations compared to other digital transformations and other ERP systems, even more so you wanna make sure that you have tight project governance and controls to ensure that you avoid those risk that I mentioned here. Microsoft Dynamics typically works off of its SureStep methodology. And SureStep is its proprietary methodology for deploying D365 to organizations. It's a great starting point. It's a great way to create an agile environment of designing, building, testing, and deploying technology, but it only addresses one work stream. So you don't wanna to be too dependent on the SureStep methodology that only addresses the technology work stream you need to make sure you address the other work streams and that you augment the SureStep methodology with the other work streams that are gonna make your project successful. So things like organizational change management, data migration, integration, architecture, 
business process improvement, business process management as a few examples, as well as the overall program management and project governance. Those are all examples of work streams that are typically either missing completely or they're underwhelming in the SureStep methodology. So you wanna make sure that you augment that methodology with some of these other tool sets and work streams. Now, Microsoft D365 implementations are complex. And to be fair, any ERP implementation is complex. And especially when we're talking about the finance and operations, the FNO version of D365, that's a very complex product. It's built to handle a lot of different functions within an organization across a number of different industries. And that's generally, again, a strength of the product, but it can also be something that you get caught up in and twisted around in during your implementation. So that complexity, in other words, can be a strength, but it also has a dark side that needs to be mitigated and managed during a transformation. So this gets back to the whole concept of making sure you have a clear blueprint and a clear phase zero digital strategy and implementation plan that addresses all the things you need to have as part of your blueprint and your architecture for your overall transformation. You wanna make sure you spend the time to do that first before you start engaging with the technology implementers so you have that clear vision of how you're going to address some of these complexities and that you don't get too caught up in all the different moving parts of D365. One of the biggest disadvantages that Microsoft has in the marketplace, and arguably the biggest disadvantage that Microsoft has, is that they haven't done a very good job of managing their ecosystem of implementation partners, technical implementation resources, and system integrators that implement the product. They have sort of a free-for-all approach to allowing a lot of different parties to get certified in the Microsoft product suite, but they don't have a lot of governance control over their channels. So in other words, Microsoft has a very laissez-faire or hands-off approach to how they manage the different implementation partners, especially when you compare them to SAP or Oracle or Infor, Epicor, Workday, some of the other big software vendors in the marketplace. Microsoft has done that for a number of strategic reasons, but the disadvantage is that it puts the onus on you, the organization that's implementing, to make sure you found the right partner and that you've really vetted the partner, not only the organization itself, but the technical resources that you might be deploying. Now, the other challenge is not only that the implementation consultants are inconsistent, but it's also that they're very focused on D365 as a technology. So in other words, they know how to design, build, and deploy D365, but they're not necessarily good at all the other stuff that's gonna make your project succeed or fail. Things like program management, the change management, data migration, integration architecture, all the other stuff that we've talked about throughout this discussion, those are the things that make a project succeed or fail. So even if you found the best partner from a technology perspective, you need to augment that partner with other resources that can help complete the picture for you. Just as there is inconsistent quality of resources of technical implementers, there's also a lack of accountability, generally speaking, of technical implementers. And this is actually a common challenge across other ERP vendors as well. You get these big system integrators, these big implementation partners that make money by the hour to help you deploy technology. It's fair enough, simple enough, and it makes sense. But what ends up happening is they're gonna get paid and they're gonna incentivize to ensure that they roll out technology that works from a technical perspective they're not necessarily incentivized to deploy technology that works from a business perspective. And those are two very different things. Your technology might work technically, but it may not work for your business or address your business needs and priorities. So again, to augment this, you need to make sure you've got the right project governance in place and also make sure that you've augmented the technical resources with some of the other resources that can ensure that they can be accountable for the success of the project. So things like the business process improvement leads or the change management team those are people that are more likely to have a material impact on the success or failure of the project. One of the strengths of Microsoft E365 is that it has that familiar Microsoft look and feel. Love it or hate it, it's familiar. You know what the menu structures look like. The, gr the graphical user interface looks very similar. It integrates with SharePoint. It integrates with Power BI if that's a product you use. So there's a lot of different Microsoft suite of products that it integrates with and that creates that familiarity that many people are looking for. And as a result, they end up thinking that the deployment is gonna be a lot easier than it actually is. Just because it looks and feels like a Microsoft product doesn't mean that it's easy to deploy. And so what that leads to is an inaccurate or an unrealistic plan and budget and resource plan that 
gets companies into trouble. So the key here is to make sure you've got a realistic plan and that you take an objective and technology agnostic view of what it's going to take to make your D365 project successful. And that's one of the things that companies like Third Stage can do is help you take a realistic view of what it's really going to take to complete your entire transformation, not just deploy technology that works from a technical perspective, but not necessarily from a business perspective. When organizations outsource their Microsoft Dynamics transformations to a third party like a technical implementer, they oftentimes abdicate responsibility or relegate responsibility for risk management to that third party. And ultimately, that's something that you need to bring in-house, that whole risk management function. Most system integrators and technical implementers aren't good at recognizing risks, especially outside the realm of technology. They might be good at recognizing where the risks are if we change something in the software, or if the data doesn't flow the way it should, or if we don't test the integration points between two different systems. Sure, they're going to help identify those risks, but the majority of risks that we typically see and the most significant risks we typically see with organizations is outside the realm of deploying technology. It's more commonly related to human or organizational change management issues, business process issues, integration issues, lack of project governance, lack of timely decision making from your internal team. Those are all things that lead to big risks and those are more commonly the bigger, more material risk in a transformation. So you don't want to just outsource that or assume that your technical implementer is going to provide you that view. You need to either have your internal resources do that or again, leverage the services of an outside independent third party that can help you do that. Now, another big issue with Microsoft E365 transformations is that organizations get so hung up on deploying Microsoft. They're going to deploy the Microsoft technology stack to their organization, and they don't focus on what they're going to get out of that system or what they hope to get out of that system. Yes, they'll focus on making sure they're implementing on time and on budget. Sometimes they succeed, sometimes they fail. But what's even more alarming is that they don't focus enough on defining what the expected business value is and ensuring that they manage the implementation to maximize that value. And where they didn't achieve the value that they expected, they should be doing a post-implementation sort of value realization exercise to really maximize the value creation and the benefits realization that they get from that transformation. So again, this is something that you can't depend on your software vendor or your system integrator or your implementer to do. This is something that you either need to do as part of your program management or leverage outside independent third-party services that can help you do that. And that's something, again, that the third stage team can help provide. So these are some of the biggest risks you should be aware of as you go through your transformation. But what do you do about that? How do you overcome these risks? I've tried to give you some tips throughout the discussion here today, but I also wanted to leave you with some resources that will help you identify these risks and mitigate these risks more proactively. For example, we have two different resources that I think might help. One is our quality assurance framework that helps identify risks and mitigate risks along the way. And you can see that image here in front of you, and you can actually download that image via the links below. So be sure to check below. I've got a link to that framework that you can download. I've also included a link to another framework, which is our Microsoft D365 implementation readiness or implementation planning framework. And that's really a framework and a representation of the things that you should do early in your D365 project to ensure that you avoid and mitigate some of these risks that I've talked about here today. In addition, I've included a number of other resources below including most notably our guide to a successful Microsoft Dynamics 365 implementation. It's a information packed guide to help you provide best practices and lessons learned to ensure that your digital transformation using D365 is successful. So be sure to check out those resources in the links below. I hope that helps you through your D365 initiative. So I hope you found this information useful and I hope you have a great day.